show him when he's on his 16th birthday. But this thing is not two hands, but you want it. You can't hear him with your fingers, but he's not there. He wants them! He wants them! A one! Hot! 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 Blue 32! Blue 32! Snow for puzzle. Mm. You also in the snow. I want to go in the snow, Dad. No, 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 not you. You're not allowed out here. Let me go over. No, it's just right. You sure? Just, just stand there. Don't go there. These bushmen. You also want to feel. Feel the snowflakes. I'm running out of battery over there for some reason. Get the snowflake in your mouth, Ah, oh, snow, snow. Are you filming us, Dad? Yeah. It's only the second time I've ever seen snow. Well, not quite, but close to anyway. Oh. She's trying to ca catch the snowflakes. She's trying to catch the snowflakes. <gasps> Are you trying to catch the snowflakes? <laughs> Look at her. She's like, come here. Come here, snowflakes. Come here, snowflakes. Just get you out of it. Snow. Gabes. I don't think it's enough to... Oh, is it enough already? Mud bed. <laughs> That's mud, bro. Right? I mean, no, don't throw mud at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite funny for a wet person. Oh, I actually... Shame, Etty's going to go to work this morning more fun, and, you know, and she's going to come back and it's snowing. Come on, let's take you inside, Puppet. Yeah, the whole world changes when it snows, you know. That is just things bad, cease to exist. Let's be. What's 
Do you have nice snow, Gabe? Yes, Daddy. We're going to play in the snow tomorrow some more? Yes. Yeah, I'll be cool. Sonic waves set up by an orbiter's nose cap and wings cause an overpressure resulting in twin sonic booms, signifying landing is imminent. Touch down in gear. Shoot, crack shoot coming out, and the nose gear touching down. Roger, wheel stop, John. Welcome home. Thanks for a great job and a fantastic two weeks of microgravity research. As you have seen, the Space Shuttle Explorer is very much like an actual working orbiter. If you would like to tour the Kennedy Space Center and see the areas where... Who are you asked Dad and Kate Kennedy going on a bus on a tour? We've just come out of... Thanks for joining us. We'll be departing momentarily. Hi, I'm Gary. With just a few tips on getting the most out of this journey into America's windows is one way to experience it. But looking at this monitor is another. We're going to take to the air. Many of the most critical functions have two complete backup systems to ensure cruising technicians. Ladies and gentlemen, if you noticed a crawler transporter to your right, it's only one of the components used here at the Kennedy Space Center to move the space shuttle. Or tight rod mission. You notice they have more launch facilities than we do here at the Kennedy Space Center. They have a steady launch calendar over there of both military and commercial payloads. Now ladies and gentlemen, this is Launch Complex 39 Observation Gantry. The gantry is accessible with an elevator for your convenience. We do recommend this as a picture stop, as this will be the closest you'll be to any launch facility here at the Kennedy Space Center for us here today. <laughs> The massive vehicle assembly building, the second biggest building in the world apparently. The Boeing uh, assembly plant's apparently bigger. Doors all the way up near the top. And each one of those sections tele telescopes up into the top of the vehicle assembly building. Over to your left. This is not a mock-up. These are the very consoles we sat at when men first took off to fly to the moon. The tragedy of Apollo 1 had put us a year and a half behind. We were making up for it in one big leap. And we were doing it with a rocket that no man had ever flown before.
was a few days before Christmas, 1968, when Apollo 8 sat on the pad. She was the first of a new kind, a moon rock. This was the phoenix risen from the ashes of Apollo 1. The Thirty-six stories high, she had been fully fueled throughout the night. The liquid oxygen in her tanks caused ice to form on the outside of the crack. The extreme temperature difference between the air and the sub-zero fuel caused the metal skin of the rocket to expand. Our hands on the controls of the most powerful, most complex machine ever built. It had over two million separate systems. And to bring these men back alive, everything had to work perfectly. But what we didn't know was how they would perform when all two million began to work together. That moment would come when the countdown clock reached zero. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8. Right here, where it actually happened. Mankind is about to leave his planet behind and journey to another. It is one of those rare moments when history is not being made. Destiny is being embraced. This is launch control. T minus three minutes and coming. We've completed our communications checks with the Apollo 8 astronauts in the cabin and the communications are go. During this period, once we do get the firing command, the various tanks within the three stages in Saturn V launch vehicle begin to pressurize.
This is a section of the new International Space Station.
section of the space station being assembled. A little planty things being grown in a little planty, planty experiment. Taking a picture of the space station. Cape Kennedy Rocket Garden, surrounded by rockets.
Come on, man. Dad, what's in there? I don't know, let's go and have a look. Population. 
You see, in the savannas of Africa, these guys eat a lot of seeds and grains, but they also eat insects, which is important because they can really damage a crop. The feathers on his head are his little eyelashes, all feathers. But you know, I had no idea that so much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Hope, and Hope serves as a living symbol of one of the greatest conservation success stories of our time. You see, it wasn't long ago that the American bald eagle was in danger of extinction. Their numbers had dropped so low, so rapidly, that many feared future generations would never see this beautiful bird again out in the wild. But just when things looked their worst, an incredible thing happened. People started to take notice, and they began to take action. They started cleaning up the waterways where the bald eagles fished, and they even stopped using the chemical pesticide DDT, which was mainly responsible for their decline. Little. So much so that just recently, on the 4th of July of this year, the American have to help save endangered species all over the world by doing something as simple as cleaning up our own... See, ...and recycling and supporting conservation efforts. We can save beautiful species like these green winged eagle owl and this spectacled owl. You know, it reminds me of one of my favorite old sayings. We've not inherited this. And if you folks want to, we'll try and answer it the best we can. Remember, friends. There is a connection between the heart and the spirit of all living creatures. So from all the living creatures here, but especially our beautiful feathered friends, bear Namaste. Namaste. Thank you all. Antelope are very rare, and they are rarely ever seen. There are some more over here. Oh. See if now black rhinos do look pretty indestructible, but they've been hit really hard by poaching. There are only about 2,200 black rhino left in all of wild Africa. If you look to your left hand side, you will see some shovel bill cranes. Or, I'm sorry, shovel bill storks. Right there, you can see their buttons. Good work. Uh, let's see if we can get a hold of them. This is Simple One calling Warden Wilson Matua. Are uh, you making the rounds this afternoon? Over. Yes, Sipawan, and today I have a passenger, Miss Johnson, my very, very fast We've just reached South Bay River, folks. Uh, we're heading north towards the Savannah, Wilson. Oh, yeah, we're going to see you. Oh, John, Sipawan, welcome to the cover. Hey, look to your left-hand side also, the rest of the nipples are a little bit farther down. Most of it. Okay. Nipples weigh about 350 pounds. They spend most of their time in the water. Cooling off. Okay. Yeah. The Simba, when you come to Senecali Bridge, go pole pole, very slowly. Well, the old the bridge has been better days, and I think I will ship the ice friends to crocodiles. No, no, no. Uh, Roger that, Wilson. We just reached the river. There was a baby there, too. Uh -huh. What's this? No, it's not the wrong side. If you look to your left and your right hand side, you should see some African Nile crocodiles. They get much larger than your right They can reach up to 20 feet. and willoughbees do migrate through here. Lion, antelope, and elephant live there pretty much year-round. And this is part of the wild Africa we're working to preserve here. Uh, 
right, guys, we're heading into the Savannah now, so we'll talk to you later. Oh, we do have some wildebeest right here with their babies. A little bit further out, those little guys over there, those are Thompson's gazelle. Oh, we just like to call it Tommy Bill. If you look to your left, you can see an ostrich right out. Well, two ostrich right Those are sable antelope. Both the males and the females on the sable antelope have horns, and they are very impressive. Get a better look at those Thompson's gazelle right over there, right outside. This is a termite mount. It is made of dirt, but it's about as hard as concrete. And what's the up so that they can see lions or see the about 18 to 20 feet in height. They have a tongue that's about 16 inches long. These darker brown ones that are nearest to us, those are Eland antelope. Eland antelope is the largest of the antelope species. They can usually reach about 6 feet high at the shoulder. We also sometimes see mandrel baboons down here at the left. Uh, this is Simba Wonder Wilson. Do you have any clues to the whereabouts of Big I have not seen them today. Try the red clay pit. Big Red is the elephant matriarch of the reserve's herd. She gave birth a while ago to a new calf. He does bathe in the same red clay pit as his mama.
Scimitar horned oryx. Their horns get to be about 42 inches long. A little bit hard to see. A cheetah can run at speeds of up to 70 miles per hour. That makes them the last, the fastest land mammal on Earth. Uh, this is Simba One Wilson. We've reached the copies, but uh, nothing suspicious here. Okay, Simba One, but keep your eyes open for anything unusual. Over. Uh, Roger that, Wilson. We'll do. If you look just up on the hill there, you might be able to see them. Lions usually spend about 18 to 22 hours per day sleeping. The female lions are the ones that really do most of the hunting. The males just kind of stick around and guard the territory. There's a female right there on the edge of the rock. Are you guys up to helping Wilson chase down some poachers? Yeah? Hold on, everybody. You have to be nearby. Hold on.